Robin Robbo. Streaming across the globe, Ben Norris, Rob McKnight, and David Robinson. Ben Robin Robbo. Show. He is Rob McKnight. <laughs> oh, how fabulous! Woo! We are here on the Gold Coast. We are at Ashmore Palms Holiday Village, and what a day, guys! What a day what a to day. be on the Gold Coast. It started off raining, Ben, and yeah, it has become beautiful. It actually had three different lots of weather, which is fine for me because I'm from Melbourne, <laughs> from my cabin to set, which was great. Really? And so it rained and I got sunburned. Um, so yeah, it's just been a fantastic, unpredictable day. And I yeah. just want to know, I'm mm. putting bets on who melts first. I'm oh. going to say me. Well, maybe you, because if, if we get a shot of up here, Abby, uh, you've got your own special <laughs> key light here. What's happening with that? You've got it's your own because lighting? Because I'm an asshole. Oh. I started yelling at Rob yesterday about not having you've enough got, lighting. So yeah, now well. he's not taking any chance. I really am not. Yeah. I said to Rob, oh, it didn't hurt me. I just walked into a door. Um, <laughs> We've got a very special oh, guest with man. us today. Melissa Bell <coughs> is with us. She returns yeah, to the Ben Robin Robo Show. Yeah. Hello, Melissa. Hi, guys. Hi. Uh, now, Melissa, we love you. You know oh, this. Thank you. Um, but you were just telling me you've taken part in a movie. Yes. It was filming on the Gold Coast, and it's called The Possessed. Oh. So it's due for release next year. That's and right it's, up your alley, isn't it? And it's <laughs> actually based on uh, real, real, events. real events. Yes, thank you. It's the heat. I should be No, hang on. I was saying that sarcastically. <laughs> a show called, the, a movie called the, Possessed the, yes, the is possessed. based on real, yeah, real events. Yeah, real events that have taken place. So you'll see that come to the screen. There was John Jarrett, Lincoln Lewis. Wow. Um, myself, yeah. So is it like exorcism kind of stuff? It is. Yeah, I it's, love it's those based movies. On, yeah, it, so you, you get to see exorcisms and it's horror and wow. it's a Chris Sun film. So oh, fantastic. Chris Sun, um, no, he's I'm gonna local. I'm going to put you under you know, you pressure here. What are the films that he made? Uh, Boa. Oh, um, I loved that movie. Yeah, Charlie, Charlie's Farm. Yeah, yeah a oh, lot. And his genre is horror. Yeah. And I tell you, just... Yeah, it's Would going you? to be. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I'm, I'm I can't wait to see it. Would you say yeah. that he's probably psychologically harmed because he <laughs> creates all of these weird horrors? No, I don't think so. Okay. He's a great guy. This is the first time <laughs> I, I met I met him and worked with him. No, he's very passionate and it's just so it, it was just so good to be involved in in something like that did you ask him whether or not you were better than melissa Tsikowski? she's it? in it as well oh, she is. <laughs> is she playing your sister no, or no. no oh wow because so, she was in his pig movie it, industry, oh, it? it is it is just kids recycling um now we worked together like on east street yes you know, yeah so years and years and ago and she was ringing her bell <laughs> yeah so um, no that's colette you think oh, yeah, yeah, getting it right. oh, i did with Colette on Saturday Morning Live, you think I would know that? You really would, and I'm so no, glad that we. She did read my lips, read my lips. Yes, yes that's she did. Right. Yeah. And and Ray Martin famously asked her, "What's your detonator?" And she goes, "What do you mean?" Well, you oh, say yes, hands, hands off my detonator. detonator. <laughs> <laughs> and he, she's like, "Oh, it doesn't mean anything." <laughs> I wonder whether or not she writes her own lyrics. I mean, um, maybe I she was know. singing someone else's uh, song, so she I didn't. So. She didn't even I, know I what heard a detonator many was. Stories about those recording sessions. Oh God! Okay. How <laughs> tracks would suddenly appear overnight. Now I've got to oh. ask you this question. <laughs> I have to ask you this question, Rob. So yesterday you threw a glass of water at Robbo. So is this why wine, we have a water. Oh, wine. wine? Well, he's Jesus. So when he throws water, <laughs> it turns into wine for me. Yeah. Now, you can you smell it still? No. I haven't washed this. Just so everyone knows. <laughs> he, he smells nice. And have you put Thank this you. beautiful lady in between us so that we make sure that you don't throw wine on him? Robbo did that. Okay. So oh. if there's any wine I'm, thrown today, <laughs> Melissa's in the middle. Can you throw it my way so I can drink it? Hilarious. I need one. I aimed for his mouth and got his shirt. Oh. I, was, I would not make a soap opera actress. No. Or an actor. So I guess that's important to know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that just yeah. registered in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, there are some real hot button issues to get along, but we're going to take you right through this fabulous park as we're here today. We are at Ashmore Palms Holiday Village. If you live nearby and want to come down, we've got some people watching the show go to air. It's a beautiful day as everyone gathers around the pools watching what happens and what we're all about. But first of all, let's get into our hot button issues. 
and the New South Wales Police Force has wholeheartedly rejected a proposal to ban genital and breast touching during strip searches. The report, handed down by the Law Enforcement Conduct Commission, also made recommendations that police officers should be trained at identifying people at risk of trauma from invasive searches. The force have acknowledged strip searches should be would be confronting for some people, but there's no commitment to of any of the strip searching policies, i.e. they're refusing to write them down on paper. Robbo, the police force are there to keep us safe when we're in danger. Um, it feels like they're watering down these powers and responsibilities too much. Well, I don't think so, Rob. I, 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 look, I, th I think the police only have themselves to blame because we've seen so many issues before where they have uh, done inappropriate things, where it's been to uh, young girls, young boys at, at music festivals. I think that's a big, massive, uh, massive problem. At the same time, though, I think they need to be progressive in the way that we do need to do that. Now, it, we all know that there are many, many cases where people do hide drugs in places that are that should be your no-no square, um, but they do it. <laughs> they do it anyway. The only thing is, I, I like the recommendation of where they should be trained about people who shouldn't get that done to them, um, which is important as well. I, I, I think the police only have themselves to blame for this report because they have they have they have done searches that have been unlawful, that have been um, you know un, irresponsible, um, and I think that that's really important to uh, to take on board. But how do you do that? How do you actually decide? In a moment's notice, who can be searched? Well, but, but it's not a moment's notice because in so Central Station in Sydney, they put up, they literally was doing because a lot of drugs obviously mm. pass through Central Station in Sydney. Um, they put up uh, massive kind of um, you know screens like hospital screens, and they were just randomly picking people to yeah, do strip searches. Yeah, yeah, and it, honestly, so wow. in the terminal, yeah. they would be brought in behind these screens. Um, women have said, and quite rightly, yeah, they're like squatting, too. and they're, yeah. you know it's really awful. Um, and there's no kind of, we talk about racial profiling, which is really bad, but there's no profiling of what we're looking at here. So what you're getting is police aren't trained to look at someone and go, well, they might be carrying drugs. They're just accepting everyone. So we're talking about, you know, 18 year old women, um, you know, really young people that shouldn't be on their way to work or on the way to see a friend and getting yeah. asked to squat behind a screen. I think the big problem is with the police, they brought this on themselves. What do you think, Melissa? Strip searches are invasive, but they're being done for a reason. Do you think police are abusing the system by doing these strip searches sometimes? Well, ag again, what you're just saying, it depends on how do you just randomly say, okay, that one over mm, there, yeah. what, yeah. what's your selection yep. process to warrant that strip search at that time? So, Well, it's a hard question to ask you because, I mean, you're not there for every single circumstance. I mean, you've never been there to witness whether or not it has been right or wrong. Yeah. We don't have the details on how yeah. that selection process works. The, yeah, selection However, process, yeah. don't you think that as a woman, if you're going to have to oh. be selected, do you think there should be a process where another woman accompanies you? Oh, or, of course, yes. And would you want uh, to be having that search process done, perfect, like you know, appropriately by a woman or a man? Like, as in these these are the questions that we need to yeah. ask ourselves yeah. to have due process. Yes, yeah. Well, definitely. Um, but th but this has happened. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. This has happened though, where females are present. There are males present, but they. It's almost like the token female. I just don't think it should. It, there should be a kind of an idea of guilt before you bring someone in so it shouldn't be yeah. you know when you go to the airport and you, you go for a flight and you kind of get randomly selected to get swabbed yeah. or whatever I, I think that's what's happening I don't with even these like that. no no exactly exactly I'm like, oh because you're in front of everyone exactly oh, is this, is this <laughs> my time? Oh my oh. <laughs> now this <laughs> is service you don't get this at any other part cheers thank you jeff and cheers. michelle cheers, cheers. cheers. cheers everybody cheers cheers, cheers. 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 I will spill that on Rob's computer and that will oh. be the end of the show, so Gee, I'll just... sorry. <laughs> but I, look, I don't, I don't think it should be a thing of randomly like the airport. I think that's you really have, I mean, terrible. It has to be warranted. Yep, there yep. has to be the selection process of, you know, that person is, yeah. is, is guilty or not just bring them in because, hey, you know... Yeah. All right, let's, let's move on because, Robbo, I actually want to ask you about this next story because there has been a dog that's fate is hanging in the balance in New Zealand after it attacked a man. Now, Robbo, let me understand this property. 
The man was on the property of the dog owner. You shook your head. I've got it wrong. So the dog owner and the man went onto another property. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the man didn't like the fact that the that was there. They got into fisticuffs or a dust up or a melee. <laughs> or a punch, or a like wankers. I think we get it. I two think we get it. <laughs> bloody be fighting, uh, and then the dog went for it. Right. The the dog should not be destroyed on this thing. So basically, so the hang dog. On, hang on. So what happened then? So the they dog had then a punch bit, up. The yep. dog bit him. But the man who owned the dog was also beating the other guy with a bat. Well, no, his wife was. Oh, it's, Jesus. What episode of Jerry Springer was this? Well, no, no. It's all in the same. Was Jerry there? Of course, of course. Not here. No, 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 no it's, it's in the colonies. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess what we're trying to say, though, is, you know, who's at fault? And, like, you know, when it and comes... And should the dog be put down? No, well, it shouldn't. No. No, it Hang shouldn't. On, the dog attacks someone. Yeah, because its owner was getting attacked by yep. that person's wife with a baseball bat, so it's instinctive. So hang on. It's, it's no, instinctive I thought, to protect the owner. I thought the non-dog owner was getting attacked with a baseball the bat. The non-dog owner oh. was, so the, the husband was Oh, we're wife. explaining this really, really well. Hang well, on. If you only read the story. Excuse me. I'm confused, and I'm on the show, <laughs> and I haven't read the story right? before There's we started. <laughs> I came to you. There's actually nothing in the auto queue. <laughs> well, that's going to be Genevieve's fault. Genevieve. <laughs> Genevieve. All it says Come is... Here. I mean, sorry, can you come up, bring your camera around here? Because I really had to try and get myself out of this. I did write it. Look at this. It actually says XXX take headline. Genevieve, were you in charge of writing <laughs> cover two? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, alright, well, off you, <laughs> off you pop. Yeah, back in the film. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, oh, <laughs> well, Lobo, do it. You know the golden rule: never let them ignite onto the set because they will not stop speaking. No, I, I saw so, that's. that's All right, bye bye, darling. No, we're, it's not a rehearsal. Um, so, okay, I need this laid out. I'll do it right now for you. Okay. The man with the dog went onto the property of the other man. The other man didn't like that it was happening. The dog, the, the, the two people got into a fight. The dog then went for the other one shouldn't be put down i agree with melissa yes. because the dog man's best friend women's best friend uh pe person's best friend person's best friend people yep they them there whatever yeah. uh yes so they should uh do that he should the be... guy wasn't attacking they were in a fisty car but, but if you've but got a dog, dog there who goes and sees their owner in like in trouble like my little like billy billy shout out to you know you're watching um, she will bark about anything that comes near our house. Where's you can't blame the dog. The dog is programmed to protect the owner. Yes. I agree. Put the owner down. Oh. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But I agree with Melissa. No, I then, human life, I'm sorry to say this to all the animal lovers in the world, but ultimately human life is more important. And if this dog is a danger, it has to be put down, surely. Well, I don't necessarily think the dog was in the wrong here. And I mean, at the end of the day, we are responsible for our animals. Yes, if I you agree. are going to own a pet, I think it is your duty uh, of care to others yeah, yeah. to make sure yeah. that that dog is being looked after. Now, in a panic situation like this, where there is domestic Hi. violence happening... Hello, Dal. Oh, welcome to the show. <laughs> Do you I want a champagne? <laughs> Just, I need to check your ID first. Uh, how old are you? Seven. Okay, well, maybe not today. I tell you what, uh, it really yeah. is. I've got to say, Ashmore Palms really is that kind of place it's where a it's family. a family affair. Yeah. And it's interesting. We'll get back to the dog in a moment. Okay. It's interesting that I was talking to one of the gardeners here today, this morning at six when none of you were here, and he was saying there's a lot of return visitors here, which beats volumes because everybody comes back now. On the subject of the dog, yeah, um, I agree with you that the owners need to take responsibility. But here's the thing: um, where I live, my kids uh, were in. There's a park right opposite our place. The mm -hmm. kids were out there with our dog. This other dog got yeah. loose, came out, started biting into the dog. The kids were screaming. Look, we had the door open. We were there within seconds. But another neighbour beat us to it. He was there punching the dog out tying it up because it yeah. was attacking you know yeah, yeah, and yeah. you didn't know if it was going to attack the kids yeah. what suburb do you live in well i'm not going to reveal that oh. but should um, the dog be destroyed though yes and it, that actually happened and we didn't have oh, to do anything wow. so the yeah. owner this was a rescue dog 
and the owners actually were devastated. Like, I'm always we're... disgusted, though, in these situations by the people are responsible, and that is the owner. And at the end of the day, as I go back to that, and it's the owner's responsibility to be looking after that animal. And if you are going to have a dog that lends itself to be one of those breeds which we know are known to be quite dangerous, yeah. I'm not against them having those dogs, but I do think that different... Uh, situations need to be put in place to protect their neighbours, etc. Yeah. So, like, you're going to need to chain that dog and make sure that it's on a this lead. This dog was chained. They were. At, they actually so couldn't work out how, how it escaped. Off. But it was a rescue dog. It was a staffy. Um, and I think that they really... They were just devastated because they were trying to do the right thing. They're taking in a rescue dog. They're trying yeah. to look after it. They were keeping it locked up. Oh, in a, sorry, you're talking about your... Uh, sorry, My I was yeah, sorry. I We've was now gone on to a Rob yeah. McKnight experience, yeah. and it's 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 a good one though. It's better than the car one that we had <laughs> two weeks ago. No, don't bring it yeah. up because he'll bring. It. Yeah. So what happened? I was in the car, and this guy beat me, and then stuck. No. Um, and they, but they they paid for because our dog had big chunks out the back of the back of her. Wow. And um, I don't mean to cut you off, but I feel like Judge Judy. I don't think I have all the facts here. So like, for my, I, for my story. But no, just both of these stories. Like, I think I need more facts to understand the story. Like, you know, other, did the other dog in the other circumstance did the dog follow the owners onto that property? Yeah. Was it chained up? Well, that's the thing. Uh, and, and you know, if this owners, look, I feel sorry for the dog because yeah. I agree with everything you're saying that the dog was looking after its master. Yes. Why they were fighting and having fisticuffs is anyone's guess. But I do worry that if this dog is going to be an attack dog, then possibly something needs to be done. I think we're done. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was about to make I was looking at Rob's face and I was like... <laughs> you mean Robbo? Robbo, sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's a BBO. We'll go so back it's... to the uh, name tags. Yeah, yeah great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that didn't work well. Uh, well, whilst Prime Minister Scott Morrison and Federal Health Minister Greg Hunt have assured us they intend to get all Australians home by Christmas, many still re many still remain stranded overseas, and other operations, are any other nations are shocked. At least 39,000 citizens and residents are stuck due to Australia's international arrival uh, priorities, which have been gradually increased. Having seen Australia's progress in containing the coronavirus, a number of reports in America are calling the cap close to unreasonable, extreme and draconian. Some have even questioned whether it is a breach of international law. Melissa, I have big issues with Australia in the fact that I have always believed that if Australia... <laughs> something... Well, I just started laughing at you. I have big issues with Australia. <laughs> no, and then Melissa's face was like... Melissa, <laughs> where is this going? I don't know if I'm where going to solve the problems of the world. Yeah, you're going to help I'm me solve right the now. problems of the world because here's the thing. <laughs> okay. Any time an Australian gets stuck yeah. in, a, in a bad situation overseas, yeah. you expect we so our government, you, to, come you expect to, the our government to get in there and help them and yeah, get them out of it, like out. the Americans do. Yes. If anyone takes an American, yeah. hell or high water, they get their people home, yes, right? Yes, they do. We don't. We don't do that. In fact, we hand over evidence. Look at the Bali Nine. We could have prosecuted them on Australian shores. Our government gave the Indonesian government... Why are you shaking your head? This is right. It's right, but it's just they wrong. They gave them evidence <laughs> to prosecute them, to which them. could have potentially had the death penalty. But that is the, that is the country that they're entering into, and that is the... Uh, the Department of uh, Foreign Affairs always says that if you're going to another country... Make sure that you adhere to the rules. So I if agree. Anyone's, if anyone's yeah. gone to uh, like overseas, you, you're told to go to Smart Traveller, which I think is a fantastic thing. Uh, Smart Traveller will tell you the countries and say, and they will even be really open about it. They will say, if you go to somewhere like Indonesia or Thailand, they are very big yeah. on drugs. So if you're trying to do that, just be aware of what's going to happen. Yeah. Right? So I, I don't think that that's right. I, I also think that Australian or the Australian government does try and get people back. I don't my think they try hard enough. Well, my worry about the COVID is that it was, there was a long period of time and I think what aided that was people didn't believe fully in the COVID um, emergency. Yes. And the government did allow for a very long amount. Of, it's not like the, the, the Australian government said, oh, you've only got two weeks to get back. That wasn't the case. If there are still 30,000, 40,000 people what were they doing when the Australian government was handing them saying, Here's information, a flight, come back. here are flights, and they're saying, well, I don't want to, like, oh, we can only assume what they were saying in the way of, 
Oh no, this will be fine. This will be fine. And now they're crying poor at the. Oh, I'm so sorry. I just touched your straw. I'm slurping. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I clean my hand. I sanitize. Thank oh, you. I keep touching. I would not sorry, touch sorry, sorry. anything that Robbo's hand has been. No, I'm not. sorry. Every, every time I make a point or I agree with Mel, I go, I go, I go like this. I just touch it. Sorry, but I think that. Um, Give it back. That's important. It was a very big window yeah. that people for had the chance to get, to get home, back. So now they're saying, oh, and we're, we're stranded. Paying for it. We were paying for it at the beginning for a long time. Yeah. I, I agree with that. And I do think people were complacent when it comes to coronavirus. But then, really, do you, if you got into trouble overseas, do you trust that the Australian government would be fast enough getting you out of that predicament? I just don't think things happen in a straight line like that. I mean, obviously, the government want to do the right thing by you. But yes, when it, they want to do the right thing, but if it hurts diplomacy, they will throw Australians under the bus. Well, you're only going by Why Australian. No, by I'm case. Talk, I think there have been cases, cocaine passing. You know, we've done the wrong thing. I'm not denying they've done the wrong thing. But even when our, even when Australians have done the wrong thing, it is our government's job to get them back home. Throw the book at them. Let them be charged by our laws. And I agree with you. If you go overseas, you have to be willing to yeah. accept the punishments of a foreign government. But can we also talk yeah. about the processes that are in place with the Australian government at the moment in bringing people home? I mean, yes, there were some offers to people. Not all people declined them. People's circumstances do change as well. But, however, we only have a certain amount of hotel quarantine. We actually only have enough space to be pu putting these people through. It's a congested system at the moment. Yeah. So and at it's the a moment, new system too that 100 we haven't had to deal with yeah. that was overloading and changing yeah. day by day, week by week. I, I spoke to a frontline worker and yesterday who, you know, wears PPE, working in Brisbane, who is working with people coming into this country from overseas with coronavirus, and hearing about the individual process that happens to everyone coming through this country, I have to say that I think Australia is doing an amazing job and I have to shout out to those frontline workers that are out there because they are doing an amazing job. Uh, I, couldn't, I, I agree with all of that. All right, let's move on because the UK's National Health Service or NHS as it's called has been forced to apologise for an ad aimed to raise money for their fundraising organisation. The ad includes a character that we all know and love. Have a look and see if you can understand why it caused a stir. Good morning. Hi. How are you feeling? Take your time. Take your time. I've got you. All those work is hiding in those weak and broken hearts. Have what you can manage. Okay. The girls and me can cry those hard faced queens. I miss it. That's an easy. God knows what is hiding in those weak and sunken eyes. Fiery throngs of muted angels. Good evening, how you doing? Mm, someone's popular. <laughs> people help the people. And if you're homesick, we can send you home. Hand and I'll hold it. Look after yourself. Merry Christmas. People help the Thank you for everything you've done for all of us. Santa. I've be cold as a stone and rich as a fool. Turned all Merry those Christmas, schools. everyone. Look at all these Okay, well in a statement they said in response to the ad was initially overwhelmingly positive, though comments on YouTube including shame on you, absolutely disgusting, as if ads do have not as if we have not been through enough, forced them to remove the ad from all social media platforms. The NHS has also said they ensured the ad was cleared by the relevant regulatory authority. Um, but they still did apologise for young children who may have been upset about it having seen Santa Claus having COVID-19, uh, but they were not the intended audiences. Ben, do you think people are overreacting to this? Uh, I love it. Well, absolutely they're overreacting to it. I mean, at the end of the day, I think it's a good message, and that is that no one is safe, even people in the North Pole. Yeah. So I guess people are too sensitive at the moment, but we do have to remind ourselves that there are always better ways to tell stories. So was there a better way to get this message across without doing that? Maybe. And so maybe go down that path. But I thought it was hilarious, uh, and 
I, I don't want to say anything else because anything else I say about Santa will upset all the children here at this park. No, well, look, I know it's upsetting for children to see Santa um, suffering, you know, but let's be honest, he's been around for a long time. He's, you know, if 99 year olds are prone to COVID, someone who's over thousands of years old yeah. is going to be prone to it. Do you think I... he's been social distancing though with all of those elves? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> And I want to know which elf didn't go through the hotel quarantine. Like, ah, who brought it on the hotel quarantine? It's just a, it's just upsetting. Well, how does that? Uh, you know, like, um, hasn't one of the premiers? I think it might be New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian given Santa special permission to not quarantine well, coming no, no, internationally. No, oh. Santa has been giving, uh, given special quarantine across all the world. Yes. Yeah. So we understand that Santa has been in quarantine. He's been separated from everyone. The elves have been separated from everyone. I think that's important to know, uh, but this is the way to get the mess. Adults aren't listening. They're yeah. not listening, are they? So we're yeah. seeing over 300,000 people dying in the US alone. So let's get to the kids because the kids know that Santa is for good. Uh, he is for peace. He is for the better of the human race. Mm. And that's the way I think to get, I think this is a really smart campaign. Sort of shock value. Yeah, to, because the kids will is, hear it. This is, this is real, it affects everyone. Yeah. No yeah. one, it, it doesn't discriminate, you know, Absolutely. whether you're Santa or not Santa. It, yeah, I so, agree, yeah. yeah. And, and, and kids want to impress Santa, especially at this time of year. So if you get the parents, so the, the kids might say to the parents, put on a bloody mask for Christ's sake, you know, yeah. uh, for goodness sake. But uh, I've got to say, Robbo, I yeah. think it's piss weak for an organisation that's, you know, run it by the authorities to say, oh, a couple of people on YouTube are upset about it and we pull it off. You know, like, we're just getting Leave it on. into this cancel culture all the time. Yeah. You have to remind yourself, though, that the reason why social media is as powerful as, as it is is because it's giving people a voice. And the voice that people are allowed to have, it's kind of like they're taking the piss. Because now... They're pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. I really want to... I think Robbo brought this up earlier this year and it was a really good point to make. And that is that people out there want to be heard. So they're just saying an opinion and they're putting it online without necessarily believing what they're saying. Yes. And Although, do, just does to the have person, that voice. Does the person want to stand ahead of other people to make a louder noise about something irrelevant just to be seen? And I think that's the guilt stand there. Stand on the soapbox. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. But hang exactly. on. There was Robbo's point earlier this year and it's true. Have it, but I just had a realisation. Before social media, there were always the jokes of the old nanas on the typewriters writing letters to the ABC. Yeah. How dare you put that on the air or, you know, writing letters about commercials and getting changes made. And so has social media just replaced the letter writing campaign? You put also just to say that, you know, we're coming a long way, but those people do exist and you can't please everybody. I mean, I, I, it's on brand to be in our final week and for me to bring up a story about me on Big Brother. <laughs> Gather, gather well, around, gather pull around. Pull up a champers, Mel. This gather is going to be a long one. I'll tell you a story. So the, fi the show finished. I just proposed to my partner. Picture this. Uh, yeah. 2012. Um, sorry, I did that like Ma from the Golden Girls. I've obviously been watching that too much. <laughs> you were yet Anyway. Like it's 2012. Yeah. Anyway, the show, the lights came down and I just proposed to my partner and a woman came up and said to a producer standing next to me, you will not be putting that on television. And then when she was told, well, this is live, it's already been on television, she kicked the camera that was next to her. What? Now, I was only a couple of metres away from this altercation, but there were people in the audience of Queensland very upset that a man had proposed to a man. And at the end of the wow. day, we have to remind ourselves that whilst we're all so busy to catch up, there are still people out there that have their own opinion, whether it's right or wrong. And I mean, for that person, you know, I hope they rot in hell. I mean, I hope that they um, get on board, they got on board with marriage equality. But I, I still don't want to take that away from that person because I still think there is a right to have an opinion. We're, doing there's, there's a we're simple all born solution. with free will Absolutely. To, to say what we think and there, feel. There's yeah. a thing about Agreed. opinions. Yep. When it comes to who's wrong and who's right, mm. those with opinions are wrong and I am right. <laughs> well, as the viewers know... Free will! I think, this is a, I think this is a good point oh to bring God. up the fact that Rob doesn't read the messages that the people who follow no. this show have to I, mean, I do read them. I mean, yeah. he cut his mic. Please. And I block yeah. them. Um, <laughs> Melissa, yes. what are your thoughts on uh, replacing Rob on the show for 2021? <laughs> and who would you choose? Yeah. Ben, Mel oh. and Rob. <laughs> Hey, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think we got our I first laugh here. from Amanda today, so she's into it. Yeah. All right, look, 
before we get to entertainment and some other things, it has been a really tough year for many, but 2020 wasn't all bad. And Rolling Stone <coughs> have compiled a list of their top 33 moments. Are we awesome. doing all 33, Abby? No. Good. Uh, and they made them smile. <laughs> they included the tiny owl in the Rockefeller Centre Christmas tree. Oh, yeah. the, French, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air reunion, Taylor Swift surprise albums, the, co yeah, co the coordinated celebrations for frontline workers. So it got us thinking, what are our favourite moments from 2020? Ben, what was your favourite moment? I have to say my favourite moment had me in tears. And I think after what had happened in Victoria, being locked in my home, you know, with a small reprieve, but from March, the day that we got to zero, it yeah. seemed to happen faster than I expected that it would. Oh, yeah. And when that announcement was made and I actually saw that there, I, I was so overwhelmed with emotion. I knew it was going to come. I wasn't one of those people thinking we're going to be like this forever. But I was so unexpected for that duality that was going on for me because I was smiling with tears coming down my face. Mm. And to live through something like that, to live through something like this that we've all gone through in different ways, yeah. it just was a confluence of emotion that my brain couldn't but anyway I've moved on to my favorite moment being Robbo's hair today uh, it is absolutely <laughs> amazing it's a little hot and it's a little humid Hold on, let's, let's get a check shot here yeah oh, oh. <laughs> oh that's high I'm so sorry I think it looks good though no higher the hair closer to God yeah I think hey, it's Merry Christmas so what's been your favourite moment of 2020? Uh, surviving. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I'll probably getting engaged, yeah. Oh, hey. Congratulations. Hey. That's oh, there you are. 2020 moments. Oh, yeah. lovely. Oh. oh, wow. Oh, that's a big bottle. Yes. And what's his name? Grant. Grant? Yep. And we love Grant. Grant. What does Grant do? I want to know. I'm a busybody. <laughs> Finance broker. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's interesting because I've got a deal for him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the Ben Robin Robo Show, and it, it, it'll return. Just commercial. <laughs> I think he's watching the show. You know, he's watching his fiance on the show right now, and I don't think he wants. To, um, I don't. <laughs> Do think... not give him my number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, Make it stop. That's, congratulations. That's yeah, no, that's yeah, awesome. So that's, 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 a, that's a big, yeah, 2020 story for me. Yeah. Yeah. How did he, I always want to know, how did he do it? Um, the the, the, uh, yeah, the um, proposal. Yeah, thank you. He said, oh, how about it, love? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, just that, went to a nice <laughs> restaurant and we pre-picked the ring because um, I'm a little fussy. Oh, so you know it was coming? Yes. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> so you knew it was coming. Then, do you know what? I admire that because do not let the man pick the ring. I think it's really smart for women to do that. I mean, yeah, we all yeah. know when I think you should, I think you should know in a relationship that a marriage or a proposal is coming. But I think it's, you know, you both know you're in that place and that's why you should be there. Yes. You know. Yeah. I'm but a planner. I, smart. I, I propose <laughs> then pick the ring with Amanda. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's also smart. But I wanted to know, so you were actually sort of scripting this. Did you get one of the neighbours' uh, script writers to put it together <laughs> for you? I would have been doing this a long time. <laughs> Pretty good at it. She used, the, she used the proposal from episode 137. Yes, there was a souffle and my character Lucy got married the year before. <laughs> and so at dessert, at the end of the five course. Is that souffle? Yeah, souffle for the dessert. It's a dessert. Then he, um, oh. uh, you know, got down on one knee and did the proposal. So it was a bit like um, art imitating life. Can we I just talk that. about the biggest criminal offence in the li in life today? And that was today. I was so excited that you're going to be here, and I was watching some of the clips of you over the years. Yes. And I can't believe that that horrible other woman was at Scott and Charlene's wedding and not you. Oh, oh. that we, is yeah, the we biggest talked about that last time. I know. I bring it up every time I see you. Well, some things my, that stick with me. I got my own wedding last year. <laughs> yeah. The TV. Uh, Robert, what was your 2020 moment? My 2020 moment was was um, uh, moving back in with my family. I had been. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. oh, <laughs> okay. It was actually a really nice moment. I haven't lived with them since I was 16, and wow. I was with my family, Sorry. with my nephews and nieces. I I had always put my career first, and never put them first. So so it's lovely to kind of be back with them. That's mum and me. No, can I just say, the reason I laugh is you oh, bitch nice. about the fact you're living with your family all the time. So. Not really. <laughs> can I just jump in there? And that well, was thank the... God they're not watching. <laughs> you probably are. Robbo, no, I want to save you on this one. <laughs> Robbo, I definitely want to save you on this one because, you know, being up here in Queensland, we've had the opportunity to sort of have some one-on-one -on -one moments. And we talked about the fact that you're living there with your parents. And I saw it as actually such a beautiful thing. Like yeah, the way you explained it to me, and I think it's important for yeah. family. I think family is important. It's really lovely because 
And here's oh, your parents oh, now. Oh, no. <laughs> he did it, Maka. <laughs> oh. Oh. If you wreck my hair again, I'll push for the pool. Now, what is interesting, and Robbo's going to be going and having a look around in a bit, but there are macaws here. At, like, this park is known for them. They're everywhere. And uh, it's a great this is their park. mascot. Can I pause you for a minute? Yeah. Because I was in the middle of a, like, an emotional, quite emotional moment. moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just touched oh. it. <laughs> So sorry. All right, HR alert. Boom oh, no, trap been touched. No, that wasn't because I keep touching me. Like, like, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Did you sit on your lap or no, something? <laughs> Did you see he didn't flinch because my, he's used to touching his own? Yeah, so, my uh, parents would love that. <laughs> uh, no, it's really lovely to be with my parents. It's really nice. It's really sweet. And it's lovely. But yeah, oh. let's get a shot of the McCall then, okay? Oh. What a way to ruin oh, a moment. It's sitting right oh, here. Oh, there's a real one. Yeah. <laughs> no. So oh, sorry wow. about that. This is amazing. I knew straight away. This is, uh, isn't this great? I mean, this is what happens wow. at Ashmore Palms Holiday Park. Hey, it's just uh, fabulous. Hey, but, um, Robbo, could you tell us what happened on this day? What? <laughs> what happened on this day? Oh, on this day. Well, I'll tell you, on this day in 1957, uh, the Shirley Temple announced her retirement at the age of 22. Wow. She went on to become the ambassador for the United States for Ghana and Czechoslovakia and the poor woman died at the age of 85 from natural causes and she was a wonderful woman. There she is at 22. Beautiful. Uh, yes. Next stunning. up. Yeah, the stunning woman. Yep. Next up, this is Charlie Chaplin. On this day in 1912, just one year after the end of Titanic, he signed his first contract for $150 a week, which was huge money there. Wow. Melissa, huge money. And if you want to see what he looks like, Without the makeup, without the moustache, that's Charlie Chaplin right there. Oh, really? Yeah, without the moustache. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. He's quite an attractive. Would you swipe left or right, right? I would swipe right on the Charlie <laughs> Chaplin there. Oh, my goodness. Uh, but yes, I'd hope you do that. And also on this day in 1993, Shannon Doherty, who played Brenda on 90210, was fired from the show <laughs> because of her outrageous antics. We've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and she's always been very sad about that. And that's this day in history, Rob. We love Brenda. What was her name? Brenda yeah. Walsh. Yeah, Brenda. Walsh, the Walshes. Yeah. Oh, for fuck. Oh. Oh, Robbo. No, no, I just turned around and there was a live. Hey. All right. Goodness me. Well, it's getting a little chaotic here, but look, it's time for a hit of entertainment with our good friend Ben. And Ben, The Voice is coming back next year on a new network, and we have confirmation of who the hosts are going to, uh, who the coaches yeah. are going to be. Well, this is pretty so exciting for everyone. There's been a lot of speculation about who was going to be taking those seats. We can now reveal that Guy Sebastian is the only former host from the previous series that wrapped in 2020 to come back to the Channel 7 format. He will, be a jo he will be joined by another alumni of the program for Australia, and this is pretty cool. Keith Urban, he's back in the country. That's a great uh, get. Well, Nicole Kidman and Keith Urban have moved home to Australia, so I think Nicole must have rung the network and said, give my husband a job. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's how it played out. But look, Rita Ora will also be joining, but also what I think is amazing, and that is that this is the first time we have three Australians on the panel, because we will also have Jessica Malboy. So look, the cast is an amazing lineup. Channel 7, I think, has hit a home run with this cast. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so much speculation about whether or not they were going to downsize on the credibility and the quality of a coach because of these uh, tight restrictions that Channel 7 are under. But man, oh man, I mean, they should bring that back as well. But man, oh man, <laughs> uh, it's going to be a big show. Uh, look, it really is. I'm excited. There was obviously was talk earlier that Ricky Lee and Tones and I. Um, yeah. We actually reported that on the TV Black Box website, but a lot changed since then. Ricky Lee was actually doing Australia's Got Talent, and That's there was right. some confusion there. Um, I would have been interested to see Tones and I on the panel. So why she's had barely any music out. She's still, I think, building a career. I mean, at the end of the day, I'd like to see older people on these panels. I mean. You're getting young people to stand in front of you and sing a song, and this is their life. This is their. These are their dreams, yeah, okay. and I think that we need true professionals that understand, you know, the highs and lows of the industry. Because coming into entertainment is not easy, and I don't yeah. see anyone who is at the start of their career understanding the full force of the highs and lows of what this industry can do to you. And this is the. This is the point that the voice could do differently this time around. We got to see sad stories when they introduced these people. You know, that's the that's what we were getting, a sad story for someone that they can sing. 
I'd like to see more of the true essence of who these people are and also the instruction from these coaches to guide these people into a successful career. Because I will just say, the voice is known. The voice is known for not actually having an artist coming out of that show that's been able to maintain success. Right. Oh, really? It's around the world. It's a Christina Aguilera production. She came up with the concept of it and sold the rights to it. Yeah. But we are yet to see a star... That maintains that... Yeah. that so let's create a show with, you know, showing that yeah. real side of it. So yeah. do you watch The Voice? I do. I do. Who's your favourite judge that we've seen so far? Um, I really like, I like Delta. Yeah. Yeah. I like Delta as well. Why do you think she gets so much flack though? I don't, I don't know because she's just very what? genuine and, and, and passionate. Talented. She's passionate so talented. And talented. I do not yeah. understand why she gets so much flack. Mm. So much flack. Yeah. It's crazy. Sorry, I yeah. no, 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 no. just it, it bamboozles me. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's a very nice hit of entertainment. Uh, should we continue to keep talking about the voice? Uh, about the what? The voice. <laughs> that's the segment we're talking about at the moment. What did I say? No, the voice. Yeah. You've almost lost your voice. Oh, <laughs> from yelling at all of us. Oh, oh yeah. No, I'm getting a bit confused. Uh, we are going to go to Robbo in a moment. Who's just trying to find a microphone cable. So let's do a little bit more entertainment before we go to Robbo. Um, it's been a... I won't do that one. We'll do... Now, here's one that I'm a bit fired up about. So Daniel Gorringe, who was the only housemate on this year's Big Brother who did not come on our show. Yeah. He wanted to walk away from the media because he wanted some time out. But now he's making headlines again, Benjamin. Well, this is right. Daniel Gorringe, who I think was a fantastic housemate on the show. Rob and I did cut heads over this. I mean, just because he didn't come on the show. You He's know. dead to me. Well, that might be how you roll, but it isn't how I roll. I actually thought this story was fantastic because there has been a lot, of, a lot of discussion in the media about him and his mental health struggles after the show. So it was great to see him utilising one of the social media platforms to prank his friends. Yeah. Uh, he was... He was uh, he was revealing a little bit much uh, for some people, but I actually thought it was one of the best butts I've ever seen. Have Check this out. Have got picture, Amanda? Oh, we've got the video. Oh, actually, that's just a, good, a bit of a what? glimpse to say <laughs> what Daniel Gorringe looks like. That's what he was like, it's just to give you a refresh, because I know, Rob, you've forgotten about him. That's not a true story. So the rest of Australia. Uh, but, okay. well, not necessarily. Have got the picture, Amanda? And now we've got the video. This is, oh, the, okay. this is actually a video clip of him pranking his friends, which I thought was hilarious. Check it out. That video you just had, Amanda? Oh, the video's frozen. Well, what he was doing was, I'll explain this for everyone at home, is that he was actually ringing all of his friends and uh, showing his bum when he answered the phone. So I don't know if you'd be happy with this, but he's fully naked. He's ringing all of his friends on FaceTime and then revealing his bum. It was hilarious. If you haven't got it, go and check it out. And okay, that's well, here's the thing. Um, Ben, I've got to say, and we've got a slight technical issue there, it's just frozen on the screen, that's the problem going on, but I've got to say, this guy thought he was going to win Big Brother. He thought, I've got AFL, I'm big, people are going to vote for me, I'm going to win the $250,000. What he didn't realise, he was an ass on the show. Well, he really and wasn't, Rob. I have to, I'm going to just, I did he watch wasn't. It. Um, he, did, he really wasn't. Like, I think you've literally... Well, you're entitled to your opinion. I've got my opinion on this. But I you've been looking at... And I thought he was an ass. I think you're looking at the nuances too much. I mean, we really didn't get a, a, a full picture of these housemates this year. It was very much like <laughs> Survivor. I'm judging a show on what went to where. I don't care what went on behind the scenes. I have to judge the show on what Channel 7 put to where. And when I watched that show, he just came across it to be... I really I've mean spoken. Man. I didn't like him. I've mm. spoken to every single housemate that's on that show, and every housemate said he was delightful to be in the house right. with. They said he was funny. They said that he entertained them the whole way through. And as a former housemate, that role of that male hierarchy that slips into, because it's a, I mean, these are social experiments, that's a really important yeah. part of the show. And the fact that he was so lovely in person, however, has but had a bit of a backlash. But it's how they cut it all together. Absolutely. And, and, yeah, but that's and, want, fine, but and you want can't... to feed us how, you know, build that, the characters. That's right. You can't go around to every person that watches the show and say, this person's actually a nice guy. 
He did things on the show I didn't like. He bullied people. You vote for me, you better make sure it works because I'm going to get you out. Well, I'm he not saying But it's, but it's a words. calculated game. Yeah, yeah, it is you, a game. It, you That's have to fine. have strategies in That's place. That's fine, but I'm to... judging him, him on yeah. how he played the game. And yeah. I did not like He's him. He's probably a really I don't nice guy. I like him as a person. <laughs> and no matter what you tell me about how other people like him, although hasn't he had a fallen out with someone, with some of the people <laughs> on the show? No, I think he's in. I think what, what happens to a lot of reality TV contestants, and I want to use this as an opportunity to highlight this, is that once the show is over, it's over for you. You've That's just right. had a really, uh, you've had a peak of excitement in your yeah. life and, yeah. and what goes up comes down. And while these people are coming down and getting back into their normal lives, the true success I think of anyone that's been on television is finding their own happiness after being on television because it is a hard ride down the slope and I think Daniel Gorringe has been quite public talking about his mental health issues. I think that was an excuse. It's not. The, I know for a fact this man has mental health issues. Okay, well, you know what? His behaviour was still... If he, he said, I don't want to be part of the media because it didn't work out for him, but then he's trying to get headlines. He did every other media show. except our show. No, afterwards he said, I'm not doing any media. Because he was suffering from mental health issues. That's fine. And, and it's absolutely his choice not to do our show. But that only makes me think we made the right decision on how I felt about that man. I did not like him. I'm sorry. I'm allowed not to like people. And I did not like him. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I hear that. Okay. <laughs> sorry? I can hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it. Do you know what, Melissa? I love you, though. <laughs> love you. you. Melissa, I was really lucky <laughs> that... Uh, um, yeah. Rob hated uh, my series of Big Brother, so he never watched Not it. Not because of you, though. Okay. No, I just... Because the promos for Channel 9 all promised us the world, and they deli they say, the most diverse cast ever seen. A range of ages. And it was all 20-something. So let's just talk about one clear thing. I was the first gay person in the world to win a reality Which TV is great. show. I love that. And I, oh, sorry. I was the first gay person in Australia to win a reality show, but... Uh, I was also the first person in the world to propose to their partner, and that represents diversity. And do you know what? Still that, to this day, good fortune for nine rather than good design. But maybe they, maybe they did cast the show. I mean, there was a Lebanese person in there. Yes, they probably could have gone further. There was an English person in there. How far can you really go when you have twelve housemates? Have some older people. Alex Mavridakis, who cast that show, is a good friend of mine, and I had this conversation with him because I also, inside the show, thought, hang on a sec, I was told this was the Intelligent series, and I was really scared going in because I then had to bone up with my smart uncle to make sure I sounded smarter. But at the end of the day, he all, they also did talk about diversity, and I didn't think diversity was being represented. However, let me tell you about the people that apply for reality TV. It's, it's a lot of the same people. You know, we aren't really in, heading in the right direction to have people of colour on these shows. They don't actually want to be on them. You're not getting scores of people coming through yeah. wanting to be on these shows. And until we create a safe space for yeah. everybody on television... I mean, reality reality TV's not for everyone. That is a hard yeah. step... A hundred percent. I just think this guy is so full of himself. It didn't play out like he wanted. He's whinged and bemoaned it. Mm. And now he's still chasing headlines with his antics. And I just think it's hypocrisy gone mad. Is he chasing headlines or is he it's just... It's ass out there. Yeah, it's a nice ass. If my ass looked like that, I'd have it out there as well. <laughs> All right. Hey, look. Um, is that on YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> I've actually got it on my phone. Daily Mail it has the story. Yeah. Right. You can see all the pictures there. Hey, look, when you get fired, do you <laughs> just have to own it or do you come up with other excuses? Well, I think that a lot of people come up with excuses because no one wants to be truthful about this. And uh, Rebecca Judd, who we know, uh, has been on the 3pm pickup. Uh, for KISS FM and unfortunately for her uh, as the budgets have tightened for ARN you know it turns out she has been not put forward for the 2021 series of that show so it is a li little bit disappointing however I want you to check out this video and tell me whether or not she understands that she was fired or whether or not she's changed the narrative in her own head check this out Hey guys, hope you're all well. Make sure you tune in to the 3pm pickup today with Monty and I on KISS. Uh, I don't know if you've read the news, but I have decided to walk away from radio next year. Uh, it wasn't an easy decision, but it's one I've sat on for months. Uh, it's a family decision and, and it was made back between lockdowns um, quite a while ago now. Uh, my husband has also walked away from his radio gig for next year and it's purely just a result of us re-evaluating our lives and what's important uh, to us as a family. 
for next year. Uh, but we will discuss it, or Monty and I will discuss it on radio today uh, on Kiss. And I just wanted to say that I've had the best time. It's been the best four years working with the ladies in Dicko. I will miss them a lot, uh, but it really is the right decision for the Judd family. And um, I'm really looking forward to next year. I tell you what, I checked out that clip this morning. Uh, I think it's one thing to get ahead of the narrative and try and just jump on it and say, look, I wasn't, you know, to try and change the story. But you can tell, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty good at reading people. I was watching that video thinking, lady, you are not selling this. You know, ra your radio career might be over, but certainly don't take up acting because uh, it was hard to watch. I'm calling BS completely. They got the opportunity to bring Kate Langbrook into the network, you know, so they've said someone's coming in, someone's got to go. go. <laughs> Out you go. Look, I got fired. It is something that happens. Ida Buttrose once said to me, you, n you haven't made it in this industry until you've been fired. I've been you fired know? from every job, but I want to ask you though, because whilst this is a personal story for you, it is one of the most impressive things about you, and that was at a time of hardship when Channel 10 did let you go, you did something that a lot of people don't do, and you controlled the narrative by being honest about it. Yeah. You said that you they were didn't fired. didn't expect that. No. And do you know what's so funny is truth in a difficult situation is always the best way forward. Absolutely. It may have seemed like for your own ego that it was an opportunity for you to speak to your media friends and control that. But unfortunately... Is this the possessed? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you. Oh, uh, Robo, that's my camera. Oh, I, 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 I,